Hi, welcome to Your Apple Update. I'm your host, John Sherrod, and it's time to recap the event that Apple had uh, earlier this week. Um, yesterday, in fact. Today's Tuesday. I'm getting all sorts of confused on my days because I've been on vacation, kind of a long extended weekend. And um, where I was, the Wi-Fi was, was kind of slow, not great, and so I had the, the stream going on my Apple TV, but it was not able to keep up, so it was frequently pausing and audio not cutting out and things like that. Not a great experience for watching the live stream, but I was able to follow along pretty well as a con you know, with a combination of that and following live stream blogs and that sort of thing. And uh, this was an interesting event. And if you're someone who thinks that I'm overly positive or too positive about Apple, this is the episode for you because I overall did not enjoy this event. I tweeted that it thought it was the least interesting Apple event maybe ever. And I've been following Apple closely for almost two decades now. So, uh, we'll go through what Apple announced. I'm going to start with my least favorite thing. And my least favorite thing is actually the thing which a lot of people have been most interested in. Uh, and this is quite unfortunate um, because my least favorite thing was Apple Card. So Apple announced that they are partnering with Goldman Sachs to release a credit card, uh, mostly a virtual card that you access through the Apple Wallet app. Although they will also be making a physical uh, card as well that you can use in situations where... Um, you wouldn't have access where, where they don't accept uh, NFC-based payment like that. And um, so the reason I'm extremely unhappy about this is that, you know, a credit card is a, a, a debt engine. It's a way of facilitating uh, customers going into debt. And, you know, Apple is, um, like many other card manuf credit card vendors, they're, you know, incentivizing it with uh, percent cash back deals and things like that. Um, you know, where I will give them some credit is it looks like this is probably going to be the most uh, private and secure type of credit card that's out there. That's laudable, but at the end of the day, this is still a credit card. This is still something where there are interest rates attached to your payments. And uh, Apple made claims about how they had low interest rates, but then you go after the event and look at the fine print on the website, and we're talking about 13.24% up to 24.24% depending on your, your credit rating. And so even at that lowest rate, that's that's still a ridiculous amount. Um, and so I, I'm not a fan of credit cards. I don't use credit cards. I recommend you don't use credit cards. And even though Apple may have made the flashiest credit card that's out there, I'm not a fan of this. I say stay away because this is only, you know, the average uh, American household has over $8,000 in credit card debt that they're carrying. And, you know, uh, you know, now Apple is taking on, you know, this position of, you know, becoming that institution that when you get into trouble like that, you hate them. Why do you want to, you know, why do you want to go down that, that, that route? I mean, I understand the, the financial incentive for, for any company, which is why so many companies, they're just about every retailer you do business with, every auto manufacturer that you do business with offers a credit card. Um, but uh, I say stay away from this. Um, this is, this is not good. I hate seeing Apple uh, go down this road. It's not surprising because there were rumors that this would be happening for a long time. You know, and Apple uh, made a lot of uh, statements in that segment of the presentation about helping people become more financially responsible. Well, if you want to help encourage people to be financially responsible, don't offer them a credit card. You know, Apple Pay itself is great with a debit card. Um, it provides a ton of security for using your debit card. And when you're using a debit card, the money's coming right out of your bank account. And so, you know, it's a, that's the way to be financially responsible. Use cash or your debit card. And so, you know, Apple can continue to innovate there, but I'm not happy about seeing them offer their own credit card. So Apple Card was a big dud for me. Um, the next thing, and, and I'm probably going in, in incorrect order here, but the next thing I'll talk about here is Apple News Plus. Uh, this, again, was something that uh, the rumors pegged. We knew that this was coming for a long time. Um, Apple had bought a company called Texture a while back that uh, facilitated um, subscribing to magazines digitally through an app. And uh, Apple acquired that company, and Apple News Plus is now integrating uh, basically that feature into uh, Apple News, the Apple News app that's been on iOS for quite a while and now is on Mac OS as of Mojave. Um, but basically through Apple News Plus, you can continue to use Apple News the way you always have, but for nine ninety nine a month, you can have access to uh, lots of different uh, paid magazines and newspapers that previously weren't available. So a lot of these uh, publications um, made articles available on Apple News, but this was just stuff from their website. It wasn't full magazine content. And so with Apple News Plus, you can subscribe again for that nine ninety nine fee and have access to um, all this magazine content. And uh, 
I, this was just kind of a snoozer for me. You know, it's interesting, you know, 20, 25 years ago, I would have loved something like this because uh, as a kid, I was a big uh, consumer of magazines, uh, subscribed to Popular Science and had a, I think a PC World subscription and um, had, um, I used to love to get the Mac Mall catalog and had a car and driver subscription for years. My dad had a National Geographic subscription forever and used to love looking through those. So, um, you know, there was a time when this would have been a lot of interest to me, but I, I just don't consume uh, media that way. I consume media. I do use the Apple News app. That's the free Apple News app. Um, but I get, you know, most of my news through online sources, YouTube and Twitter and things like that. Um, and kind of filter and, you know, use that to jump off into other news websites and articles and things like that. But those were the kind of ways I filter and and get those things. I think that's a generational thing. So I'll be curious to see how well this is adopted. Uh, certainly, I think an older generation, generation above me, uh, might really appreciate this. And that's not to say that there aren't people my age and younger who do. And there may be more than I'm imagining. But uh, Apple News Plus for me was just not um, not super appealing. Um, they have a one month free trial. So I may try that just to kind of see what it's like. But I don't see this becoming a thing I subscribe to uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, next is Apple Arcade, and um, uh, this, and pardon me, I've got uh, allergy season hit us here in the south, and and uh, so I'm, I'm living on Claritin now, but um, Apple Arcade is, is one of the more intriguing things that Apple announced, and this is one where I really kind of have to think outside of my own head a little bit, because I'm not a big gamer. Um, I do play, I, mean, I am addicted to Pokemon Go on my iPhone, but uh, I'm not a big gamer in general, um, and haven't been for a long time, um, so you know, hearing that Apple has a subscription-based um, uh, game subscription uh, coming out is, is something that I think from an Apple business standpoint is interesting and will probably get a lot of attention and may be a, a big moneymaker for Apple. Um, but for me, is not all that interesting. However, I do have kids and, and they may be interested in this. So uh, I think we're still going to have to wait and see more details. They did show some footage of some games that have been announced to, to partner with this service. Um, interesting that they talked about it's going to be uh, you'll be able to access your Apple Arcade subscription across uh, your iPhone, uh, Apple TV and your Mac. So that was interesting to me. I think the big bummer for me is I have long wanted to see Apple make its own first party game controller. And we didn't get that. And I think, uh, you know, the, the MFI or made for iPhone uh, game controllers that are out there are fine. Um, I have a couple um, that that are, that are solid controllers, but just from a design and layout perspective, they're basically just clones of the Xbox controller. And so I'd love to see Apple kind of apply its own design uh, into that. Um, so uh, uh, Rene Ritchie had a, a tweet where he was talking about he'd love to see Nintendo design Nintendo controllers for iOS that when you connect them, unlock games, Nintendo games, it's like classic Nintendo games. And I would love to see that as well, particularly for Apple TV. Uh, but a little disappointed there because... <laughs> I just don't think there's a great story around the gameplay, the physical gameplay itself. But it'll be interesting to see more info. Maybe there's more to come on that. I don't know. Um, they did not announce pricing for it, so that was disappointing. And we're going to have to wait until later in the year uh, to, to learn more about that. And then last but not least, we had Apple TV+. Plus. And, you know, again, this is something that, gosh, for over a year now, we've been hearing all these deals that Apple's been making with producers, directors, um, big name actors and actresses. Uh, we knew that Apple was going to get into uh, the, the streaming TV business, sort of a, a Netflix competitor is the simplest way of thinking about it. Although that's not exactly what they're doing. Um, and, but we just, Apple had never said anything publicly about it. We didn't know the name of it. We didn't know the cost. And so Apple spent a, a lot of time talking about that at this event. Uh, although I still came away feeling like I don't know the most important things about it. Um, we do know the name though, Apple TV plus fine name. I mean, names are tough. I don't think it's a, a great name or a terrible name, but it's a, it's a fitting name and they're, they're clearly branding the plus thing. They've got Apple news plus and now Apple TV plus. And, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, this is something that I will probably wind up subscribing to, particularly if they come up with a bundle with Apple music or say that Apple music subscribers can get it for free. That would be wonderful. But, uh, just because I cover Apple, I'll, I'll, I'll probably wind up with a subscription to this. But I got to say, as a, as a consumer, even someone who loves Apple and loves TV and movies, I was not super compelled by this service. Um, I, I think the compelling angle that Apple's trying to sell is that they've partnered with a lot of high-priority, well-known 
uh, TV and movie content creators. So you and, and they brought a whole bunch of those people out on stage. You had Steven Spielberg and you had J.J. Abrams and you had Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon and Jason Momoa and uh, M. Night Shyamalan and, and lots and lots of other people who are big names in Hollywood. And so they're definitely going for that aspect of it. However, um, what most of these other streaming services have is they also give you uh, access to a back catalog of TV and movies. And so that broadens your value proposition because not only do you have the original content that these services are providing you access to, but you also have access to, you know, TVs, movies, TV shows and movies that you can uh, stream for free or, you know, as part of your membership um, as a value add. And it doesn't, I mean, there could be more to come. I don't know, but it doesn't look like Apple's going that direction. It looks like they're going to be um, charging just on the uh, original content that they're creating and hoping that it'll be really solid and, hey, we've got all these big names, so come buy Apple TV+. Plus. And um, uh, they did not announce any pricing for it, which was hugely disappointing for me because that was the number. I mean, I felt like we kind of knew all the most important things. We knew Apple was coming out with a streaming TV service. We knew, we knew the names of a lot of the shows they're coming out with and the premises and the people associated with them, actors and producers. But we didn't know what Apple was going to charge for them. We knew how they were going to distribute it because we have iOS devices and Apple TV. And we've seen Apple do partnerships now with um, Roku and with uh, Samsung and other TV vendors to bundle the app in there. Um, which reminds me, I want to do another episode down the road on what does this mean for the Apple TV hardware box now that Apple is making its TV service available on all these TV platforms, Roku, Amazon Fire. That was surprising to me that it's going to happen there <laughs> after all the years of Apple not carrying um, the Amazon Prime app because Apple wouldn't or Amazon wouldn't sell the Apple TV app and uh, uh, Apple TV device. And there's, I mean, all that. And now we have Apple's TV app coming out on Amazon uh, fire. So that was, uh, that's interesting. Um, so I don't know. I was just so underwhelmed by the presentation. I thought it was awkward too. Uh, I, I don't know. It just, I think, uh, John Gruber in his write up said that he felt like it, it seemed like Apple was starstruck by the celebrities. And that was kind of the, the feeling I had too. It was the, 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 uh, Tim Cook Oprah thing at the end was just as awkward as Tim Cook with you two years ago. Uh, again, just felt starstruck -y, just kind of weird, awkward. Um, we didn't get to see a lot of, uh, we didn't get to see any full-length trailers for the show. We did get to see kind of one compendium trailer showing clips from several of these shows um, for the, the Apple TV Plus service as a whole, but uh, we didn't get to see a full trailer for any of it. It was just, it was mostly just these actors and producers and directors coming on stage to tell you a little bit about the show, which is not as exciting or compelling as seeing a trailer for a show. Uh, some of the shows did did sound compelling. Uh, the Jason Momoa, uh, Alfrey Woodard series about uh, the the society that has been blind for hundreds of years. Interesting kind of genre sci fi concept there. Um, several others that were interesting. The amazing stories uh, story talking about the World War II pilot that winds up in the present day. Again, really interesting, compelling stuff. Um, I was, I guess, uh, it's interesting. The, the the show that I've been most interested about because I'm a I'm a sci-fi nut and I'm a space history nut is uh, Ronald D. Moore has a show where the premise is roughly the space race, except it never ended. And uh, we got to see some clips from that, but it wasn't. There was really not much attention drawn to it, and we didn't get Ronald D. Moore on stage to talk about it. So that was disappointing to me because that was the uh, the um, that's that's the show I'm the most looking forward to on that. But again. I don't know. I just don't. I just don't find the series or the uh, the service all that compelling, um, given that it's just this new original content without the kind of back catalog access to stuff. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Again, if they say, "Hey, you get it for free because you own an Apple device," or if they say you have an Apple Music subscription already, so hey, here you go. Here's this for free then I won't be able to complain too much. But if you're going to charge me another $10 a month for this service, you know, again, I will do it because I cover Apple, but I don't know how compelling that is to to consumers, given that there's a ton of other streaming services out there who all have engrossing uh, original content, plus have a back catalog of stuff. Now, again, my ultimate um, ideal service like this would be Hey, you know, give me access to the entire iTunes store video catalog, the way Apple Music essentially does that for the iTunes store, um, plus Apple's original content. I mean, if you gave me that for $10 a month, that would be an amazing deal. 
but nobody offers anything like that. The, the, the business arrangements that exist with these movie studios and movie and TV show content owners is just different than it is in the music industry. So I'd love to see us get to that eventually, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon, but that would be amazing. Even if you said you could stream a certain number of titles per month from the iTunes store and you just picked whatever you wanted to, I mean, that would be hugely compelling to me, but, um, uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see what the price is. But, uh, you know, I'd also, I was also kind of talked on Twitter about how I'd love to see like an Apple unlimited service where you got access to, um, Apple news plus Apple music, Apple TV plus, uh, Apple arcade, and maybe an expanded I, uh, iCloud storage tier for $25 instead of having to pay $10 per month or whatever they wind up charging for all these individual pieces, because that gets to be expensive. I mean, it's, if, if you're paying, Ten dollars a month for the maximum iCloud storage space, which I am, plus ten dollars a month for Apple Music. Well, that's twenty bucks already. If Apple TV Plus cost uh, ten dollars a month, that's thirty bucks. Apple News Plus, that's forty bucks. Uh, Apple Arcade, that's fifty dollars a month. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they're not expecting most people to be subscribing individually to all of these different services. They expect that some people will get one of these here and there, but a bundled price would be amazing. You know, I fear it would be higher than 25. I fear it'd be more like 40, but, um, you know, give us, give us something to take the edge off of that overall. And maybe I'll do another video where I just kind of go over the thousand foot view thing here. Um, uh, but in short, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't see a ton that was super compelling for me in this demonstration. Again, Apple Card, I was just completely disappointed that Apple was going that direction at all uh, because I think you're, you're much wiser to avoid credit cards altogether, which is what I do. Um, and then the other things that are not, um, you know, ethically questionable, like the credit card thing is, uh, but they're just, they just weren't super compelling to me. Um, so we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, if you've got Apple News Plus now, what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear about it. You can post a comment on YouTube or you can hit me up on Twitter at JW Sherrod. Did you love this event? If so, let me know and tell me why. Maybe I'm uh, off base on how I reacted to, to some of these services from Apple. Um, but um, we will have a lot to talk about as the year goes on. Of course, WWDC is coming up in June and we should get a lot of updates about uh, Apple software platforms, the Mac, iOS, tvOS, watchOS, etc. And hopefully some new Apple hardware in the form of Macs in particular. Uh, that's it for this episode of your Apple Update. I'm your host, John Sherrod. Have a good one.